Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and so excited right now about some very interesting things I'm going to be sharing with you guys. Uh, here we're going to be on Israeli News Live talking about uh, the false prophets, the Antichrist, uh, kind of like a type of the two witnesses, the false prophets mentioned in the Bible there. Uh, Matthew sp specifically, and then we're going to be talking a, a little bit on Patreon tomorrow morning. I'll be uh, sharing with you about being born again, and uh, you're going to look at being born again, the resurrection, in ways you never thought possible. Uh, the moment in the twinkling of an eye, what really is that? Hmm. These are things that I'm going deeply into, and so I can't wait to share that. Again, it'll be on patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. I'll put a link below for you so you can go over there, join up with us there, and take a look at that. That's going to be a fascinating teaching. But right now, we are we are going back. I want to first, let's see, is this where I want to be at? Let me just look and see real quick uh, over in the book of Matthew. Um Ooh. Pray to God that your flight be not on the Sabbath day, because then there will be great distress, which has not been since the creation of the world until now, and will not be except those days were few. No flesh would be saved, but for the sake of the chosen, those days will be few. At that time, if one should say, Behold, the Messiah is here or there, believe it not, because False messiahs, plural, and false prophets, plural, will arise and they will give signs and great wonders so that if it can be, they will come to lead the chosen astray. False messiahs and false Christ. Then, if they should say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Behold, he is in the chambers, do not believe it. Behold, I tell you before it happens. Again, Jesus said to the disciples, as the lightning comes from the east and even is seen to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. I'm still trying to figure out verse 27. I'm sure many of you have probably more simplified version answer of that, but I feel like there's something much deeper to that particular passage. But the messiahs and the false prophets, why does Jesus talking about it being in the plural? And they would do great signs and wonders, and they would be so powerful that it would even lead the chosen astray. Well, I think the reason we have this is because Israel, we already know, they're looking for two messiahs. Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David, as they call it. The Messiah of David, the Messiah of Joseph. They do take that from Daniel's prophecy. They do know that one will be killed, even though they miss the fact that Jesus was killed. Uh, but they're looking for another. But you might say, though, well, what if I, I can get that, Steve. I see in Daniel's prophecy in chapter, I believe it's chapter 11 there, where they would come up with more than one Messiah. But why prophets? Why the plural of prophets? Well, they're going to have a singular prophet for Elijah. And why? Because Elijah forerun the coming of the Messiah according to the scripture. As we see it written, uh, prepare the way before the Lord. See, that, that was, um, we know it was John the Baptist it was speaking about, but for the Jewish people, they still believe he's coming. So you're going to have a false Elijah coming. But they're going to have two prophets come on the scene for the building of the third temple. Even though we know the building of the third temple is totally out of whack. They want to have two prophets. Why? Because Ezra spoke about two prophets. And it was over the building of the second temple. So let's take a look at that. Now the prophets Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edu, prophesied unto the Jews that, that were in Judah and Jerusalem. 
In the name of the God of Israel prophesied they unto them. Then rose Zerubbabel, the son of uh, Shelatel, and Yeshua, the son of Yosadak, and began to build the house of God which is in Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. So for Israel, in order to have the third temple, they're going to want two prophets to come on the scene as well. No doubt about it. And when they look at Daniel, and he shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and he shall think to change the times and the, not law, not Torah, he does think he can change the time, zamin, right there. Zaman is literally the word time. Zamin is times, plural. Vedat, and the decree. <coughs> so he thinks that he can change the time of when the temple was built, the second temple, and move it to another time frame. And the decree was Artaxerxes given the decree to go forth and build and to restore Jerusalem. So this guy, this Antichrist, is going to think that he can do that. We know this too because Jesus in uh, Matthew 24, let me see if I got it over here. Um We're in 22. That's part of my message for tomorrow, so I don't really want to lose that one. Let me just find a... Here's a Matthew right here. We're in chapter 23, but I'm going to switch it over to 24. And um, I forget even why I'm actually going to Matthew 24 now. Uh... Hmm, so we looked at Ezra, Daniel, Matthew 24. I don't remember now why. I for, totally forgot why I wanted to come over here to Matthew 24. Uh, hmm. Looking just to see if I could see why. Well... <laughs> Can't really back up the recording and figure that out. So we'll go back. Let's see. Daniel. Okay. The change of the decree. The time. And uh, and of course they would do that. Uh, Ezra. Oh the two. Wit and of course they're going to want to. Oh I, I know why. I know why. And I do need the abomination that makes desolation. That's what I want. All right. Maybe not Daniel 24 though. Um. Or maybe it is. Let me see. Maybe verse 15. So let's go back over here. I think that was what it was. Verse 15. Yep. There it is right there. But we do need. Wherefore, that when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. All right. What is the abomination that makes desolation? Well, if we look at the Hebrew, Matthew we find out exactly what that abomination of desolation is because in the Hebrew Matthew, he actually tells, you, tells us what it is. This is why that writing is so important. And let me make it big enough for you guys on here so you can see it clearly. Let's see, we're in 23, 24, verse 15. This is the Antichrist, and this is the abomination which desolates. All right? The, so the one that desolates, that brings about abomination of desolation, is the Antichrist, as we see right here. The Antichristus, Vize, uh, Shakuts, Shamam, Haomer, okay? Okay, so it literally says, this is the Antichrist, and this is he who is the abomination of desolation. Not just any uh, word there. It actually says, Vezehu. 
Okay, this is him, or this is he, that is the abomination of desolation. So you have it right there. We already know exactly what it is. The Antichrist is the abomination that makes desolate. And uh, he is the one, of course, that is going to bring about the building to change the, the, the time and the decree. And it's going to be given into his hand a time, time, and a half a time. Very similar to that of the three and a half years that a lot of people talk about of Revelation. And as we see that take place, we know, like I said, you have Revelation 11 that speaks about the two witnesses, but then you get into Revelation 16, and we read about the false prophet. Um, you know, and for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them the blood to drink, and they are worthy. Uh, now that's going into your singular prophet, though. The singular prophet written in Revelation 16, I do believe is the false Elijah spirit, that they're going to have, that will have these great miracles. But I also believe that they're going to try to bring about two false witnesses, uh, just like they did with the building of the, of the uh, second temple. They'll do it again in this day, but this time they will they'll claim it. And I think they're really going to do it more so to get Christians to go along with it. And they will type it, though, with the scripture of Ezra, when they show you that the prophet Haggai and Zechariah came. And they'll even probably tell you, well, Revelation never said which two prophets it was, but that'll be what it is. And then they'll bring those out at the same time that they bring out their Elijah spirit, and they will so show such great signs and wonders that the people would actually believe it to be true and would literally, as, as, as Matthew said, they would even lead the chosen astray if it were possible. Uh, Revelation 20 or 19 here, it says here, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against them that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. Uh, we know that they're cast into that lake of fire with brimstone, uh, but not before there's a lot of havoc that's re wreaked on the earth by these false, this false prophet and this beast. And I believe that beast is that Antichrist spirit that we're looking at there. So Anyway, I just want to share that little bit with you there because I was looking at that and it kind of caught my attention. But at the same time, I've been doing a lot of research on the new birth, uh, being born again. And I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to be more surprised about what the new birth, really, really the depth of what the new birth is. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. And don't forget also to check out on our website, uh, IsraeliNewsLive.org, uh, the, the article there, uh, there that, my, that, uh, that I wrote there. It's about my father-in-law. Uh, comments continue to come in. We actually had a nurse and a doctor both uh, comment here. I think one of the last comments in here. Um, let's see here. And I have no, oh, well, there's, looks like more. Let's see. Dr. Mahaffey has commented also. Jennifer Marshalls, uh, she is a board, oh, she's also a medical doctor uh, who said that I'm a board certified MD and I cannot believe what Carrie Madea has done. As someone trained in medicine, I know of no one that would have treated any patient with a drug cocktail she used on this poor innocent man. She caused him to suffer grotesquely in humane death. I have read the autopsy report. She knew what she had done was murder. That's her own words there. Or she would not have relinquished her medical license. She is a psychopath, in my opinion, and needs to be prosecuted for murder. She is a danger to normal society at the least. Uh, that's Dr. Marshalls that made that statement there. Um, so I did not even realize that that was a doctor that was actually speaking on that. But definitely take a look at the article there. The article is very much in depth. 
we bring out uh, some of the evidence there. We are going to be bringing out more and more evidence. It is just overwhelming the evidence that is out there. Uh, anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. Uh, and hopefully tomorrow, Yana and I are going to be doing a Stephen Yana chat. I don't want to say 100%. Uh, we had some issues while we are on the road on Thursday, so I wasn't able to participate. And uh, what my wife's fault is my fault there. So uh, we are trying to do a makeup on that. Anyway, and of course, the one going on Patreon tomorrow that I'm doing on this being born again was my Thursday teaching that I was working on. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.